Hi, this is Ms. Delosier, and these are your notes on biological macromolecules. So uh, there are four main types of macromolecules. You're probably familiar with them. Uh, they are carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. And of the four types, three of these, carbohydrates, proteins, and nucleic acids, are what we call polymers. However, lipids are not polymers. Um, so what is a polymer? So we need to talk about what a polymer is. Uh, polymers are a specific type of large molecule made up of smaller molecules. And so when we're talking about biological macromolecules, we're really talking about polymers. So why do you care? Well, you should care because a lot of the, um, the foundational molecules for the structures that we're going to be talking about in anatomy and physiology are actually made of polymers. So it would be helpful to actually understand you know, the differences between the molecules and how that impacts the, uh, the structure and the function of the human body. So let's talk about what a polymer is. A polymer is uh, just a long molecule that's made up of similar or identical monomers. So that is um, a word that we don't know yet, probably monomers. We're going we're gonna to define it, but not yet. So uh, let's imagine that you have uh, beads on a string. So I just have a string of beads. Uh, the beads could be all the exact same beads. They could be different color beads. They could be uh, different shape beads. But I just have a bunch of similar or identical beads on a string. So in this case, that, uh, that string of beads, that is the representation of my polymer. And the string, what actually holds the beads together, um, would be actually covalent bonds. So if you think back to, to your chemistry, the individual beads would be held together, the individual molecules are going to be held together with covalent bonds. Um, so each of those beads is a building block and you can't have a string of beads without the individual beads. So a monomer is just a building block or an individual subunit. So it's a pile of loose beads in this analogy and that's really all it is. So they're not covalently bonded to one another they're just hanging out. So the question is, how do I go from a pile of loose beads, um, which are useful, but not necessarily the end goal, um, to a polymer? Or vice versa, how do I go from a polymer that I, I ate and consumed in my food and then break that down into its constituent monomers so I can go ahead and make something else out of it? And so that's what we're going to talk about next. So we're going to talk about building and breaking macromolecules. So specifically, we're going to talk about building and breaking down uh, polymers. Uh, and I am not drawing a polymer um, on my iPad for you. I'm going to draw a dimer, which is two monomers bound together. Um, a polymer would be many, because poly means many. And I'm lazy, so I'm not drawing a polymer in this situation. Um, sorry, there's pictures. Uh, in later videos and in the notes. So uh, the way that I am going to build is through dehydration synthesis. So you build polymers through dehydration synthesis. Dehydration, that's like not enough water, right? And synthesis means building. So dehydration synthesis means to build molecules by removing water. Um, so I have monomer uh, number one, my red monomer, and I have monomer number two, my yellow monomer. And what you'll notice about like most organic molecules, is that they tend to be littered with like just hydrogens hanging off the end, because you know, hydrogen, and then hydroxyl groups, that OH group hanging off the end. And so what ends up happening is under the right environmental conditions, when the correct catalyst is, is present, you end up having um, the monomers react together. And so the OH and the H are, are split off and they are going to form HOH, which for those of you paying attention, HOH is H2O, that's water. So I end up with my two remaining monomers uh, bound to each other, and then I end up with HOH, which is water, right? And the red and the yellow monomer are now bound together through a covalent bond. They're sharing electrons because they've lost the electrons from the hydroxyl and the hydrogen group. So that's dehydration synthesis. The opposite of dehydration synthesis, the opposite of building 
polymers would be breaking those down. And so we're going to do that through hydrolysis. Um, and hydrolysis literally means breaking down with water. Um, that's that's what, what it means. It, it is not actually like the water breaks it down. That's not what happens. But you can think of it that way for anatomy and physiology. Don't tell your chemistry teacher that the water breaks it down. That's not what happens. But hydro means water and lysis means breakdown. So it's breaking down with water is the Greek. So um, basically what's going to happen is I'm going to have a dimer, same dimer that we had above, and under the correct environmental conditions when there's catalysts like an enzyme present, what will happen is it will cause the uh, monomers to break apart. And there has to be water present for this to happen because when those monomers break apart, now they're missing electrons again. So what's going to happen is this um, the dimer is going to go ahead and break down into its constituent parts and the hydroxy group goes one way and the hydrogen group goes the other way and you end up with my original monomers that I had to begin with. So that's it for the basic notes on, um, on macromolecules. We're going to go ahead and we're going to break the four specific types down into four specific videos. Um, I suggest you watch through them, but you don't really have to do like a bunch of notes on them unless it's something that you completely don't remember. If you have any questions, please come in and talk to me during morning tutoring uh, or make an appointment through email. Thanks.